Hey, Melissa, how are you? Hi, good, and you? I'm really great. Thanks for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. It's, um, what have we been? We've been about 25 minutes trying to set this thing up, so it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a fucking headache, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's technical, but it's cool once <laughs> the magic works. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, it's, it's nowhere near as technical as, as the um, Perfect Chaos clip that you and I did in That's terms of getting that fucking talk thing. About. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that was something uh, between the time difference, which we're still dealing with, but now there's how many hours less now um, difference? I it's mean, I'm 14, I think. Now it's 14. So at the time we shot, which was not that long ago, it was what, two months ago? Not even? Was it late March, early April? No, that was in May. Was it May? Yeah. No. It had to be. Must have. Anyways, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure our our um, daylight savings cuts out after East Long Easter Long weekend, so whenever that was. Anyways. Gosh. Yeah, I know I didn't oh, shoot was... in March. <laughs> uh, no, no, it was the definitely not March. Yeah. Sadly, started in March, and yes. so that was yeah. at least a month later. I think it was the end of April, well, maybe then. Maybe, maybe right on the cast. Yeah, I know that. May. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think you. Yeah. Because yeah. um, uh, uh, Layla was born on the eighteenth of March, and then uh, yeah, and then a week later we all got locked down. Wow. Yeah. How how was it for having a baby and being on the lockdown? Look, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, that the lockdown part of it's fine actually. Um, it's interesting. A lot of, you know, my friends and, and what have you are, and especially we're in a second lockdown now. We came out and now we're back into another one. No way. Um, yeah. Our, our, uh, in Victoria, our cases have gone crazy. <gasps> um, so, so everyone's really finding the second one hard. But, um, and not just, I really do want to preface this as not like, this is this is no bullshit. This isn't something that I'm having to manage. For me, it's a piece of cake. And, it, and it's not I'm having to like, you know, meditate every day and positive think. It just it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? I'm not having to try too hard about it. Yeah, look, I've said this before. I used to work at sea. I used to work on ships and I would be away for five weeks at a time in a tiny little cabin with people I didn't like with no internet or phone or, or anything like that. So that's isolation, you know. That's this is a isolation. fucking, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> so uh, cursing words are fine. <laughs> of course, of course. I can yeah, hear. Say, whatever the f- <laughs> say whatever the fuck you want. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting because on my side, um, regarding the, the pandemic, and the um, uh, lockdown, I was already on a personal lockdown. I, I just, not just, but like in November, 2nd of November, I had, um, I have been injured. Uh, Your leg piece, or something, was it? Yeah, my, a piece of mug broke and got into my foot. It attacked me. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> I sort of wrote a, a funny, dark tale uh, as if it was a dark, the um, what do you call it, nightmare before Christmas because it was oh. right <laughs> after Halloween. And, and it happened when, you know, like uh, at home we had a, 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 the big pumpkin. We never carved it. And it was November 2nd. And I felt like that pumpkin was pissed <laughs> off and wanted to be carved and because I didn't do it I ended up with the scar the you know the smile of a pumpkin oh, wow. on my foot <laughs> that how was the funny. fuck did, how did you what did you ha, tell me how did how did you drop it and then step straight onto it you didn't know it was there or what yeah the, I, I didn't I didn't even feel it until I right. I, I was sitting uh, and then I, I put my my leg up and then suddenly i see all this blood and i start screaming i was like ah! <laughs> it was like crazy and that scream never stopped for about 
an hour, two hours, I don't know, because then there was like um, ER that came, uh, took me, uh, of course, to the hospital, and then I was uh, stitched, but I had, they, they didn't put me to sleep or, and in the beginning, I didn't want to take that um, something they wanted to give me to calm me down because I was like, no, that scares me. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to take yeah. it. And then after 15 minutes, of, and I was like, how long is it going to be? They were like, oh, 10, 15 minutes. Like, okay, I'll just like, you know, <laughs> try to be I'll brave. I'll just tough it out. But it, yeah. yeah, and after 15 minutes, it was, I, well, I never had a baby and I, I don't know the feeling, but I know it sounded like it. <laughs> <laughs> and five miles around you probably could hear my screams <laughs> oh shit that was something that was 20 stitches um and you know 20 well, the, stitches yeah it was and it's four inches long so how the fuck do you get a four inch i don't know even the piece of mug that got into my foot was not that big i i, I have no idea this is like you know this was meant to happen i take it like that a lot of things have uh, maybe one of the reasons it was meant to happen was to prepare me to lock down because, <laughs> <laughs> because when that happened, I was really like I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't walk. And one thing um, that happened is that my doctors were like, oh, you're young. You're going to be fine after it's healed. But don't move your foot, you know, like don't move because there's a risk of it opening and like. As yeah. soon as they said that, I saw the stitch. I, I relived the stitching. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to live that again. Again. <laughs> right? So uh, I was like, no, okay, if you tell me that. And also the doctor told me no more uh, starches, no more sugar. Like if you want your scar to 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 scar in, in a, the nicest way possible. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, I can't even <laughs> eat my favorite <laughs> things because I was only dreaming about eating potatoes, fried potatoes, and, and my chocolate. I couldn't. And I was really serious about whatever they told me to do because I wanted to recover as fast as possible, which yeah. took so much longer because <laughs> uh, the fact that I didn't move my foot caused uh complications <laughs> well i figured yeah that's i think that's a really um shit piece of of doctoring there and i i feel it's a it's a it's a a, a more common um thing nowadays that that people are coming around to the to um you can't let things just sit still like that forever because you need to progressively overload that area from yeah. square one and actually the um, second doctor that um because almost every time i was seeing someone new uh the hospital <laughs> uh, every time i went for the you know like uh removing the stitches and i thought it would be one time but it was two times and it was like always like a nightmare because <laughs> i was like what you're not taking them off all the you know and they were like mm, no <laughs> we're just gonna do uh every other one and so that doctor I don't know if it was the middle time or the second time, but he said, no, no, you can use your foot. You can, and I was like, really? It scares me. Yeah. And I got scared also. So I felt like I couldn't put any weight on my foot. It was weird. And I really lost the, um, uh, n how do you say? Not the knowledge, but like the know-how to walk. I didn't know anymore. Uh, yeah, you, you could call that atrophy. Yeah. Where, where you just, your muscles um, have sort of forgotten how to move a bit. Yeah. That was yeah. really yeah. Uh, challenging emotionally and uh, physically, obviously. But I, I would, and psychologically. Um, and, and ironically, like a lot of people, and even myself, I was like, okay, well, I have more time at home. I'm going to write. I'm going to do all this stuff. And I got um, the, uh, the opposite happened is that I, I, I got really, like, blocked. I couldn't do anything creative. And the only thing that I felt was not um, too... 
um, and how do you say engaging like it's almost like I couldn't engage in anything but okay. I had to like I had been postponing the uh, redesigning of my website for so long that I dived into that and I felt that it kept me busy enough to be to not be in my head because writing you you you, you tend to you know go into your head a lot mm. and um, mm-hmm. and get the writer's block or whatever and doubts and and, and I have like a lot of uh, um, inabilities to <laughs> focus because then I have like too many <laughs> ideas and then it's like okay but which yeah. one is going to be the best one and then I, and then I, and, and then that's where I get stuck it's like I, I'm at a crossroads and I don't know which road to take <laughs> so yeah, that's what happens yeah. to me um, so do, yeah. did you have a bit of sort of you could almost call it post-traumatic stress from the whole thing probably yeah probably well, not like a yeah or a momentary sort of onset of um, a sort of a situational depression that needed to be I, worked yeah, out. I would definitely call it that way. Uh, that, yeah. that sounds accurate. And then, and so it lasted so much longer than the one month they talked about. Because, right. you know, I started PT basically end of December. So that was almost two months after. Uh, and mid-February I started... I took my first trip. I hadn't been to the city like I'm in New York. Uh, Where are you? You're upstate, aren't you? Yes. Uh, so I hadn't been in, to the city for so long. And I have my writer's group that I'm part of in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, the, the injury happened the day before I was going there uh, for my first official uh, meeting, being a member, because I had like, you know, there's like three meetings where they, they, they see if you're a fit and you see if they're a fit for you. Um, mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> and that was my first official meeting. And so when I was in the ER and with like the blood coming out the, the bandage and everything, and I was like, well, tomorrow I have to go to New Jersey. So there's no <laughs> way I'm not going. And I'm looking at the, uh, what do you call <clears throat> the person who takes care of you in the ER? I don't know. Um, like a nurse? Yeah, sort of the nurse or the or the orderly. EMT or the EMT. Is oh, that oh, the paramedic. Yeah. Oh, the paramedic. Yeah. So I told yeah. him, yeah, right. I will go tomorrow. Right. I will be OK. I mean, they will just did it <laughs> like at that moment. I was still not in the in the screaming part. of the long <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see that when you, you get, you know, to the hospital. <laughs> that was funny. I was so naive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could have wheelchaired it, I guess. Well, <laughs> Could yeah. have got a wheelchair. Well, that, that's a long trip. You need that's to take like two yeah. trains and everything. So, yeah, I had to cancel the meeting. But I did yeah. it through uh, FaceTime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely like prepared. I started already doing all my Zoom meetings through. Ah, uh, right. I, mean, uh, I, w- I did all my meetings through Zoom. I started doing yep. everything like what happened next. So when when the pandemic happened, uh, it's funny because today uh, I was in a group meeting where we talked about positively thinking and mm-hmm. and and that's basically what happened for me at that moment is that the positive side of it was that I was already I had experienced already all of that. So I was armed i was ready <laughs> i had the ammunition to go through the lockdown and it actually unlocked my creativity it just put me back on track for not feeling behind not feeling like oh the world is just like continuing and i'm stuck <laughs> at home i think you you just hit the nail on the head there and i think it's something that i um and, and, and struggle is not the right word, but it's something that I, um, I'm in a constant state of manipulation with is um, being left behind or, or not being not pushing hard enough constantly. Um, and, that, and that is something that, that I feel a lot of creatives, people in general, but a lot of creatives feel that with the lockdown, you know they've had all these projects taken away from them. And so they're idle and, and 
and and I don't know what to do and I what can I do and this and this and that and that's kind of um, how you and I met is by um, Anthony and I forget his his colleague's name from Set Apart but um, you know their brain child perfect chaos getting everyone in isolation moving and, and motivated and I don't know how well the show has tracked um, but I can say one thing for certain it has really proven to the go-getter actors and filmmakers out there that you can make quality content fucking inside a house with the gear that you have and people will enjoy it and if you're you know it comes back to that age old thing if the acting is good the acting's good that's it you know what i mean or the writing is good the acting is good and it's shot on an iphone with a you know a lamp and it's just like you not can do mine, it not mine <laughs> 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 you know, and, and, and you and I were able to, you know, uh, through Anthony, combine two episodes of Perfect Chaos together and cut scenes together from ac- across the globe. That's the thing that I'm really proud of and super happy that I uh, took the challenge on because originally when he reached out to me and it was like just dropped a quick message, hey, do you want to be part of this 48 hours? I was like, I cannot do 48 hours. <laughs> I can't. So, and then I looked at the three or four episodes that were already online. And I was like, this is fucking cool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, this is totally my universe. Like I'm, I'm myself writing, um, um, a, another, an, a, a a project in different forms and I had shot, shot a short movie with where you know like um, the new technology has um, taken a power over us and so I was like this speaks so much to me so I was like I asked him I was like if it's um, 48 hours I won't be able to but if I have a wiggle room then I would love to to be part of it because my brain started to be like so woo yeah excited you know <laughs> and then um yeah i needed an actor and and that was so cool because um i feel that the way it was done it's it's also an um it brings a new alternative to make movies and to not stop making movies and i'm surprised that i haven't heard of anyone yet i haven't heard so maybe they they did it uh but anyone yet trying those uh ways of shooting you know we were it's like a slippery slope 10, though well we were mm. 10k 10k miles away <laughs> yeah, yeah, apart, yeah 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 and and we were able to make it work so when and and i'm not a dp so if there was a dp <laughs> That was like technically that could have uh, given me more like information about the angles, the, the right things to do. It would have been even uh, better. But I'm super happy because the illusion is there. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you didn't know just through like if you were not someone who knew you or knew me and were watching that, you, you, you might if you had a real keen eye go, there's something – something a little off there like yeah his or hands they never don't touch really, <laughs> yeah they never touch and his hands don't like look like his but it's working you know yeah. what i mean yeah that's why um, I, I i think it's like and also it was like if even though it was made in a, a, a few more hours than 48 <laughs> 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 um it was still the challenge to do the the whole thing really quick and so fuck yeah no yeah yeah perfect chaos is imperfectly perfect <laughs> yeah 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 and so i think yeah because ours ours blew out to like six days or something our episode you know um anthony came to me um and just i just want to quickly throw this in there because a lot of people listening will find this very interesting is that you know anthony through Acting what's his class. name again um yeah What's the guy's name again? Jesus. Wait, sorry. I got... 
oh, wait, I need to turn off the notifications. On my phone, I didn't do that. Um, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, uh, Greg Apps, you mean? Greg Apps. Okay, wait a second. I can't do this. Oh, this way. Right. So it's getting you really video. dark, so um, I'm just a bit concerned that I've been checking on the camera. Uh, the light is fine, but it's... You see that it got darker. There's still light I can show you. Now it's like that, if you can see. Yeah, I mean, look, just just keep rolling, and I'll okay. and I'll if I have to correct something, I will. Okay, but so what I notice is now that there's like the shadow is there was no shadow originally because there was enough light. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, cool. We'll never we'll never get it done if we um if yeah we keep trying to change so the hot. tech. <laughs> so, it's horribly hot. It's like I'm oh, in a sauna man. right now. Well, and that's the other funny thing. I mean, um, I think we jumped like. Right. So let, let me, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll finish off what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I, I feel it's very, uh, it'll be very fascinating for people to know that you in New York were doing a Greg Apps um, self-tape online class. Yeah, workshop, yeah. and that's how you met Anthony, because yeah. lots of people who have been on the podcast and who are part of the acting crowd here have been and done Greg App's class. I'm um, sure. I mean, yeah, that's no surprise. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, so that's really, really interesting. So then, did you do it? So that's, I haven't done it. No. Um, what are you waiting I mean, for? I've <laughs> well, I've I've done other self tape classes, and you know, it's still six hundred odd dollars or whatever it is, and. Oh, yeah, it's in Australian dollars. But, yeah, I think yeah. it's, you know, he's really uh, he's really ahead of his time. He's been doing that for years, and now finally the world is, is switching to, uh, you know, the self-tape auditions. Um, totally. Like, totally, even if it, it yeah. started or it had started already, but he has been doing that years before. And so his approach is so different, and it's really creative and it, it it's it it's beyond the technicality of what's the good um frame or all of that it's more about standing out and creating compelling characters and mm. yeah he's he knows his shit <laughs> really I, I i yeah i really like his style of doing things and when i first started acting that's how i shot all of my auditions just because i didn't know any better um but there is still a very strong presence of old school um i was listening to um i think his last well i know his last name is uh Rappaport, i think his name oh maybe i'm wrong anyways it's the guy who does all the casting for um, the CW network, right? So all of oh, your yeah. flash yeah, and cool. arrow yeah. and all of that. He said, if he ever sees a self tape that isn't against a, a wall, he don't want to see it. Oh, but like, uh, Greg Apps is not saying to not do it. I know it's really confusing because he's encouraging you to do it in, in location, like, yeah. or, you know, uh, but it's more for me, the way I took it is more like an, uh, exciting, um, Igniting the creativity of the character, right. but then do it within the rules of the self tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cool. Know? I think so. also, I yeah. I think what you really need to do is you need to have a good agent who knows what that casting director or what that director wants to see. So if mm -hmm. they say, "Look, I really know that this guy <laughs> is of the Greg Apps school. Go outside and shoot it. You'll really smash mm -hmm. it." This guy over here, don't get on the white wall and just do it straight up. You know what I mean? So then you can tailor it. That's where you, yeah. you want to be really smart with it, and I the think. Big, and the big challenge with doing anything outside is the sound. If it, if the sound is crappy, just forget it. Oh, so yeah, that's why, yeah, that, no, I, would, that's, I, I wouldn't do that. But for mm. reels, you know, for... Uh -oh, wait. My computer got into... Uh, okay, it's still recording. <laughs> yeah, it all turned off. Turned off. Um... Yeah, if you do... Okay, let's take it back to where were we? Um, yeah, sound is really crappy. Oh, yeah. If you so do... If the sound is really crappy, it's not good for the self-tape. And, and yeah, no. Nah. I always... 
personally, I know how the casting directors are here in in, in the U.S. Uh, mm. They're really expecting a plain background. And so I really took what was helping me into getting um, this. Like your prep for the audition. Yeah, the prep yeah. and creating the character. Right, right, right. Um, now, I think I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about your experience with John Travolta. Because, <laughs> <laughs> man, me and my wife love that film. Uh, oh, from, no. from Paris of Yeah, from Paris of Love, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it for years, so... Um, but I remember watching, I was always, always a John Travolta fan, but I was always a big Jonathan Rhys Myers fan actually as well. And it's a shame he's kind of slipped away. But I really did think when I watched that film that like John Travolta was back again and then he kind of hasn't. But um, I really liked it. What was it like? Well, so first of all, I want to have like a, a huge, I want to send a huge thought and, and love and my best <laughs> oh, yeah, that's thoughts to him. Brutal. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because... He just lost. He's had a rough run, man. But when the movie uh, was done, he lost his son. So it's like 10 years apart. Uh, He's been through a lot. So I'm. Yeah, that's um, hectic. Yeah. And he is one of the most wonderful persons that I've been. I've been uh, having the privilege to have an experience with Mm -hmm. and that is so close to the stars (laughs) you know like so yeah yeah. uh such a myth like Mm -hmm. i i couldn't believe how how um how humble how human he is how accessible and that Mm -hmm. was really an unexpected experience uh it started with an audition where I I was auditioning at the same time for a musical in France for the All lead right. role. Mm-hmm. And and this was for one day shoot but with a scene. So and I was a hooker. <laughs> So <laughs> I went all dressed up for it um and it was not in the best um place in Paris like it's not like the safest. <laughs> but <laughs> That Where was, was it? Like Montmartre or something? Yeah, it was like around there. Uh, I think I, um, now I can't remember. It was in the 18th or if it was in the Saint Denis. Uh, anyways, it was around those places in the suburbs, I think. And and but that was cool because I went into character and I, w- I, I and I was like so on it, you know. And uh, we did the audition, and it was like one or two pages. It was in English, and I auditioned for that lead role two weeks in a two about two or three weeks in a row for the lead role, right? There's like four uh, auditions in total or three. Oh gosh, I can't remember everything. <laughs> but um, what happened is that I haven't heard of the Travolta movie. We're in July, I'm auditioning for both, right? And two weeks later, I booked the lead role in the musical. And it was like a national thing that was huge, mm-hmm. like in France. It's, it's quite different the way uh, musicals are dealt with. They're originals, mm-hmm. and we promote them on the radio and on TV a long time before we we actually go on stage and perform the show. So come September, we're doing the showcase for the for the musical. So we're really far ahead with the musical where I'm a lead. And then suddenly my agent calls me and is like, you booked it? It's like, what? <laughs> The thing with Travolta, I was like, what? <laughs> Three months later? <laughs> yeah. So I'm reading the sides and it's like, she walks up the stairs, they follow her, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay. Eight pages of what? Where is my role? So <laughs> gone. Where is it gone? And I'm like, oh, they didn't like my accent or they didn't like my voice. It has to be it. Why would they hire me? And then I was like, I, I really was completely at a loss. Did you say that? Like at that, a loss. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at a loss. Okay, so and confused. So I call my agents. I'm like, I think, the, like, usually they cut 
after you film the thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut me out before we even shot oh, it. So what right. is wrong with me? Maybe I shouldn't do it because now it looks like an extra. It was like, are you crazy? You're going to be blacklisted if you do that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You're right. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I'm just going to have fun, have the experience, and I'm going to, um, you know, not talk about it because <laughs> I, was, I was in a lead. I was like... Uh, my best chances is that they're going to cut it at the end. And I don't know why I'm on this. Yeah. But, but I was like crazy because I was like, why did they cut my scene? The whole scene. I was so excited to do it. And what happened is that the day before we shot that first scene. So basically my role was a, originally a one day player. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be four days of shoot over two months. Oh, right? wow. And uh, so before the first day, I was like, okay, I'm going to get ready. I'm that would be really professional of me if I watched at least one movie of the director. Because <laughs> yep, I was yep. really bummed and depressed. <laughs> you know, you book a role and you're depressed. And that's what John Travolta, and you're still depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Have like the, the madness. <laughs> People need to understand that the world of acting is just madness. And yeah. in your head as an actor, it's just like... My principle is that nobody loves me, everybody hates me, and I don't know why, you know? So even when I'm hired, I still think that, and that is so nuts. But you don't still but think anyway, that way, do you? I, yeah, pretty much, oh. pretty regularly. Yeah, this, this is not leaving me, so now oh. I, I learn to live with it instead oh, no. of trying to fight it. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to have a discussion about this later. have to sort that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so what happened is that I watched that movie and I was taken. So I watched the movie, I'm falling asleep, and then suddenly I hear my lines and I jump on the bed and I'm like, I should have known better. Of course they gave me a scene from another movie because that was a Luc Besson production and in, on his productions, they don't give the scripts away, uh, even at the audition process, if yep. the role is not like that big, you know? So... <laughs> Suddenly, I was like, no, they don't hate me. I can do it. You know? Oh, wow. I can go on set, like, and walk proudly <laughs> and do my walk described in the script. And and so it's not the end of the funny stories about, about this adventure. So what happened the first day, I go on set. Everybody is so cool, so nice. Everything is, is really peaceful. And But I haven't met uh, John Travolta yet. And we do uh, the first... Um, we are really in, in the central street of um, hookers in Paris. <laughs> and so that, that was funny because people started to stop and then uh, um, and really being attracted to, to, to what was going on on set and filming, you know, and then like the street. And so we blocked the scene with his understudy and the understudy was like, shaved and had a goatee and I was like okay and like getting you know to know the person and so we we blocked the scene and then the director is like all right we're gonna be ready to shoot a rehearsal and I'm like when is John Travolta gonna be here because I'm like okay I haven't met him yet this is crazy yep. I'm scared now <laughs> And uh, we were waiting by uh, the bottom of the street, the, the stairs we were going up to. And I see this guy that is bald and has a goatee. And then I, I bend over to see the director up the stairs. And I see the understudy that I just rehearsed with. And I'm like, how many, like, the, the <laughs> understudy has a twin understudy that's just sitting next to me, you know, <laughs> standing next to me. And then I turn the second time, I'm like, that was John Travolta. <laughs> I didn't realize it was him because it was such a new look. I, yeah. I was not prepared. Yeah, no, Nobody told that. me. Yeah. 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 Nobody told me. So that was so funny. I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> and I was like, actually, I was like, oh, yay. Hi. <laughs> that was so funny. That was hilarious. And then, and then you know, um, he's such a sweet person. Um, I think that's the best qualification to describe the experience he, he was singing on set he was sweet with the people walking by that asked him for for an autograph he would stop 
in between takes, he would start chatting with me or other people on set. He was so um, accessible. And then, so I had those four days spread out, right? Mm -hmm. And my last day was like two months later. And I was like, oh, they forgot about me because, uh, you know, my three first days were closer. And then my last day had one month in between the two last days. And so I go back on set. I'm like, wow. I mean, they had like this whole time all together. So everybody knew each yeah, other well. Yeah. But I get there. And the first thing John Travolta tells me, he comes to me. And he's like, you know, you're going to be really happy with what you've done. You did such a great job. I was like, <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, I didn't even say a word. I was just <laughs> basically <laughs> walking. <laughs> but he was, I don't know, it's, it's fascinating. Um, I forgot to mention also when we would do a take and the director is happy, he would high five with me. Uh, also, you know, like with everybody and, and uh, implicated in the scene. So that was like so engaging. There was no yeah, and oh, it's disarming too, oh, right? I'm the yeah, I'm the lead actor and don't talk to me. You yeah, 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 yeah. It, he would never make you feel like that at all. Like and everyone does a better job in that situation too. Yeah, that was so beautiful. All the encouragement. He was like, you know, you're going to be really happy when this is going to be released. And so two things happened. One is that uh, during that, when we were still shooting, I, m I met again with that casting director of that same movie of from Paris with Love and, and for another project. And I asked her, I was like, I need to understand. I mean, I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong here, but they were still casting roles for, for From Paris with Love uh, that were speaking, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I was like, how come you auditioned my role three months before and I don't have, I'm not even speaking. So how, it's, it seems that it looked like it, it's important, but it's really not. And she's like, oh yes, it is. Because at the moment you you appear next to to the star of the movie, there are some levels of approval that needs to be you know checked checked. So yeah, they needed to cast that uh, that role way ahead of time as opposed to other roles. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. he had to sign and off on it. Yes, and also that was a, s a specific type of role. It, it had to be not too street, but not too call girl, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so it had to be in between, like, uh, so they were looking for a, s a certain specific type, and it had to match a lot of layers. So <laughs> I was honored when I heard that. I, you know, like I was telling you, um, in my mind, I'm always thinking that nobody mm -hmm. loves me. <laughs> At that moment, it, it's just like so warm and, and um, I don't know the right words, but it makes you feel better. Yeah. It makes you feel worthy. It makes you feel all those things that I think as actors we're, we're always chasing. Yeah, we like reassurance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than... It, I don't care how independent and strong you are that that you get not about validation for me but just w when whoever it is that there's it's their project project it's their baby they turn to you and they're just so so wrapped with what they've you know their words just come to life or their action or whatever's just come to life and they're so pumped that they've got you to do that and that's I mean, there's, there's a few things that are better than that. It's pretty great. Yeah, it is. And and the big surprise with this movie is that uh, I ended up in the trailer. And I did not expect that at all. And so <laughs> we were doing the musical full blast. And that was like the break between Paris and the tour in France. And so I came to New York for, uh, in that break. And somehow I started receiving messages and they're like, 
We're seeing you in airports and we're seeing you at the Super Bowl. What the hell? You, you know, are you like the lead? Like they thought I was the lead in the movie. And I was like, oh, 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 wait a second. You need to not blink when you watch the movie. Otherwise, you'll miss me. But <laughs> they didn't. And that was so fun. I mean, like, what an honor. Like, yeah, it's this pretty experience cool. has really humbled me uh, and was a huge gift from. My from interest. wherever, from the universe. <laughs> and so, yes. so, I mean, when did you end up coming out to the States and how have you found your time in the States compared to being in Europe? So the first time I came to New York, I was nine years old. My mom uh, took me for our first international trip. Um, I mean, beyond the, uh, the, uh, the ocean. Mm -hmm. So that was my first time. I was nine. And uh, we really f loved the city. And my mom wanted to stay, live here. And I was like, no, my dolls are still home and, and my friends. And I'm like, I would have slapped that little girl and said, you know, you'll thank me later. Shut the hell up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <coughs> but uh, that little girl being me. <laughs> I'm like, how? Like, later on, I asked my mom, how how did you, how, how come you gave me that power of, you know, like holding us back and, you know, mm -hmm. coming back home? But anyways, uh, life is what it is. And later on, I came back. I started going back and forth. Um, and I really loved it. I mean, I, I loved the mindset. That was a big change for me. Um, part of my work into um oh gosh wait a second come on computer it's recording i don't know why it goes to sleep mode when it's still doing something anyways okay um i um yeah i was coming I fell in love with so many different things, but w one was the non-judgmental mentality about being an artist and something right. else. Okay. As opposed to, uh, unfortunately, in France, there is a lot of... of, of and I'm sure there is also everywhere, but it's it's a different perspective, I guess, here because especially in New York, because there are like the triple threats mm. with singers, actors, uh, dancers, which I don't have the third <laughs> dancer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dancer. I can dance. That's it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, in France, I I was really challenged because I was I grew up with the dream of being an actress and somehow the music happened um, totally another gift that the universe dropped at my door and that I'm really grateful and thankful for but that's never been something I was going after yeah and it happened and I was beautiful like everything that happened through it you know Mm -hmm. I, I released three albums with Universal. I, I was the artist, and, and from, from the first album to the third, I grew to be, like, on the first one, the singer and originating some ideas from, for some songs. On the second album, I started composing and, and co-writing my songs. On the third one, I wrote some songs on my own, and, and I, did the, the, I directed my, my music videos, and, and, and Universal was trusting me in every wow. step and, and, and pushing me. Um, to, you know, like really going with my vision. That was like such an, uh, another creative um, gift that I was given, honestly. In, in France or in America? In France. In, in France. France, okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and so my point is that I, I got to be known as a singer. And then uh, when I wanted to audition as an actress, they were like, but you're a singer. Really? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah, and and there are exceptions. I'm not I'm not gonna say oh no, it's like everyone like 
you have to be a singer or an actor because there are the exceptions that confirm the rule. But yeah, yeah, it's it's still not. It, 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 I, I, I don't it's know. It's not commonplace it, yet. Yeah, it's not really open to that. Now a little bit more with the musicals and, and the success of some musicals, but it's almost like the, it's new own category. You know, it's like, oh, you're a musical performer. Right. Uh, probably. But yeah, so I needed, I really needed to reconnect with my root, the, 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 um, the thing that drove me all my life, which was I need to act, I need to tell stories through movies, too. And the, the music was another medium for telling my stories. Mm. But I needed to act, too. I, 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 so the big difference with the music and the movie and the movie making is that, and it's funny, uh, wait, so... You know, like like the big difference in between TV and movies, like mm -hmm. in, in TV, the showrunner and the screenwriters are like really the the the, the captain on board. Mm -hmm. In a movie, the director is the captain on board, right? Mm -hmm. And on the on the on the music in the music, uh, the artist is the captain. So I was really the captain of my boat, mm -hmm. and. And even though there was a lot of people around me, I I, I also loved being in the service of another vision uh -huh. of a director yeah. of you know like of being more than one into uh, bringing to birth uh, a movie, a project, a baby. You know, it's like it's so different. Like mm -hmm. I I guess it's also like less weight on the shoulders. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, you're just there yeah. to fulfill your role, and it's an integral role. But you can really just narrow in on on that specific thing. But when you're making your own stuff, you're, you're spread across everything. Yeah. Yeah, and especially with a mind like mine, which is like torn with doubts and torn with uh, fears. It's it's tough and now you know I'm, I'm writing a lot i'm editing a short movie that i shot two years ago and i still am mm. unable to decide between okay should i end it this way or this way should i cut this and oh i don't know i don't know and it's just driving me crazy so what, what do you do for that i mean for me um I've, I've said this before i've said this many times and and it served me very well but when i started out as a fashion photographer i listened to someone who's a very successful photographer he's the main guy for victoria's secret russell james and he said how you define a style is by choosing the pictures when you're looking through all of your pictures after a shoot choose the one that would stop you if you were flicking the pages of a magazine choose the image that you would stop to look at the most and do it do it instinctively. Do it straight away. So you flick, 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 grabbed me. Okay, that's the one. Flick, flick, flick. And, and, and after two, three years of doing that, you have a style and you have an innate mm. organic style that has just emerged on impulse. So when you're looking at those scenes, man, just the one that you just for a second lean to a little harder, that's the one. And you can make it real quick. Mm. I'm going to try to apply that. Because my <laughs> wife is the same. She, oh, sorry, baby. She overthinks <laughs> and she will like, oh, but what about this? But what about this? What about this? I'm just like, just the one that <gasps> fucking hits yeah. you a little harder. Go with it. Go with it. Go with it. Driving you can crazy. economize massively. And uh, it's it's very powerful thing to be able to do. And then all of a sudden you have a style and it's really strong and people see it. Yeah. <clears throat> And that's yeah. the other thing too about when you're when you're shooting your own stuff, don't do a million takes. Do a lot of prep and then just go, yeah. I've got I've got other than technical fuck ups, performance, or oh, this is what I try and do. I've got five takes. So hopefully I've done enough prep that what comes out is really me. And then when if I get the part, I'll have no problem keeping it up because it was very very real and very organic it wasn't yeah. this manufactured fucking thing that i can't uphold 
No, I totally agree with that. I, I used to do like 30 takes when I was self-taping on my own with recording, <laughs> the recorded voice that I would cut. I was like, that was like the pre-self-tape times when yeah. I was still in France, but I was planning on coming here. I was sending my self-tapes and I did book some roles that way. But I would spend a lot of time on my own because it was technically really complicated. With the time difference, I would just ask a friend, can you just record that uh, those lines for me? And then I cut them in my uh, sort of Ableton, live Ableton. And then I would do it and do it so that the lines would cut at the right moment because mm -hmm. I, I don't like if it doesn't look like a natural flow. And yeah, it took me a lot of time to, to, to do that. But now, and especially with, you know, uh, having worked again, back to Greg Apps, uh, it did help me like reduce considerably the number of takes I do mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. self tape. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I do. I did. A, yeah. And, and in New York, I just wanted to mention because he's like my, my, uh, when I came to New York, I worked with two coaches. The first one was Susan Batson, and I prepared with her my my role in the musical. Actually, um, she w uh, we had a coach in France, but when I came here, I, I really wanted to prepare it with uh, her because I had started some work with her, and it's it's really particular and deep and 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 deep yeah, and dark. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And then I met Anthony Abison, who who is known for having been the first coach of, of um, oh God, what's her name? Uh, Friends, uh, the actress in Friends. Um, oh, uh, what, what, like J Jennifer Aniston? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. So yeah, he's known for having launched uh, Jennifer Aniston. And it was like coming from the night to the day because it was so much bright and fun and uh, you know it's it's another perspective on acting so mm -hmm. it was completely different i i took the best out of of, of uh, all i think that's the move I that's what you that. gotta do yeah yeah um, yeah anthony abson is like still a person that is so dear to me and uh always of support and uh, and I always reach out to him when I have a question, when I have a doubt, or I don't know. He's there. He's there. He's like, we call him A Money. <laughs> yeah, he's a great person. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, I, I've just finished telling you that I have got about five minutes left on my memory card. So I'm going to say a couple of things and then um, we'll wrap that up. But, um, a couple of things. I have a, a, a great acting coach who was on the um, podcast uh, two episodes ago, Miles Pollard, and he is like that to me. He's the first person to ever train me acting in, in acting and is still the person I go to when I'm feeling flush and I need to prepare for a role or something like that, and he is phenomenal. Um, the other thing I wanted to say to you is since you and I did Perfect Chaos, I have now oh. a group of friends who loved it and we've put together a team and we have written another mini series. Um, and I have writ just written a pilot for a show that we are all going to try and shoot as well. Um, because of what we were able to prove we could do in, in a small little group of people with whatever gear that we have under intense situations. And when we are forced to do something entire inside a small time frame, like we said, we got together and said, okay, in a week's time, let's all pitch the room being us on our idea. And it was amazing to see just the fucking, but not, not to like, oh yeah, we're amazing, but the caliber of idea and, and how well they were fleshed out in just a week of going, I have to do this. And this ties back to something you said earlier about writer's block. And I wanted to say this to you. I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast recently with this former Navy SEAL who was a novelist. And he said, someone said to him once, he said that, that, that there's no such thing as writer's block because if you were getting paid, you would write. So to sit down and not write, it's not a thing. Just write. It doesn't matter. Just, just we, because you're overanalyzing, right? We're overanalyzing. I don't want to put a word down. I don't want to put a letter down until I know what it's going to be. But you just and it and it breaks the block. 
So I thought that that was really fascinating, and I have I have held on to that because, you know, I can sit there and go, I go this way, do I go this way? Do I? And I'm worried about structure, and I'm worried about this, and I, oh, but that doesn't make sense. Just fucking right, man. Just get it out. Yeah. What happens with me, and I call, I mean, I don't call it the blog, but I mean, maybe I might call it the blog just because I feel like I didn't write the project, but is that I have like documents of 60, of 300 pages, whatever the number of pages, with notes of ideas. Oh, right. And I'm like, when the <laughs> hell am I going to start writing the story now? I want to write the story, yeah. you know? So that's what is more of my challenge is like being so overwhelmed with idea that has, that, uh, ideas that are really exciting. Yeah, they are exciting. It's just like I have too many and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I like this one and I like this one. Okay, wait. So I have this project. <laughs> I am so excited by the concept that I, I made a short movie three years ago. Uh, wait a second. That was 2018. And that's actually the project, a uh, short movie that was um, initiated to be made by my coach, Anthony Abison, who told us all in class, he was like, you either write or direct or act or the three of them in a in a short movie that not, in it, not longer than three minutes. And, and it's about um, the, how, how social media dehumanizes us. And as soon as he said that, like I slept and I had the idea in the night and I wrote it and then we shot it and I never released it because I found the idea really exciting and I started developing it as a um, like a few months later in the summer I started developing it I the, the idea was still in my mind and I was like oh my god this is really exciting there's such a big world to develop through it and that was like dystopian um, and I was really excited and so I started developing something just write ideas and ideas and like really a lot of ideas mm -hmm. and then I I, um, I got um, I wanted a screenwriter partner and uh, I met with uh, Keith Harm Harmon oh my god his his name is hard to say sorry <laughs> <laughs> Keith Harmonitis uh, who was introduced to me by uh, by James Casey a great actor who 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 did such a great job in, in a short movie missed and Keith had written it that's like such a beautiful short movie so I loved it and and he introduced me to the team and so I um, I, off, I like I showed him my short that was unfinished and I said I'm I want to develop it as a pilot and so he was in and so we've been working on it the whole last year 2019 and and if like it was really perturbing, per, per, perturbing. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The yeah, word, yeah. But you Put know you what off. I mean. Uh, what was really <laughs> weird is that. Wait a second. So, also because I still had the ideas in my head for another format of the story, I was also writing a short story form of it. So. I've, I've had, I have this idea developed in three different ways, right? And and then we write things about this world, and this world people can't touch, and people the it, so we, we 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 talk about how people have to keep distance, and how. Uh, the schools now are online, and I have all those notes that that are from 2019, early on. And then we have a pandemic, mm -hmm. and how shocked I was the first time I went to a store, and I saw people wearing masks and just six feet yeah. away. I can't tell you how feared, shocked. Um, scared I was because I was like is it a manifestation is it something I just like perceived that it was gonna happen even though in in, in, in the story it doesn't have anything to do with a, a, um, a pandemic a physical mm -hmm. uh, yeah like a, it's a pandemic but it's like electronic right, it's not right, right, nothing right. like physical uh, like that I mean like mm -hmm. a disease 
So it was very, it, in my head, I had all my life to develop it. I was not in a, in a rush. I was just like taking my time with all this bubbling world inside my head. But when you have a vision here and then it becomes real and you were like, oh, this is a dystopian story, you mm -hmm. know, science fiction. Yeah, now I'm living happens, it. You know? And now I'm living it. I'm like, how much more should I imagine? <laughs> because if that happens, what the hell is mm -hmm. going on? So, yeah, that's what has been really, oh, weird sense creating weird sensations in, in me as, as, a, as a as yeah because it's like, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's almost a <laughs> premonition yeah. yeah or I, I would like to to think that it's like an intuition, an intuition. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 more than like a manifestation no not a manifestation That's yeah what's scaring I, me a lot. I would be quite scared if you were able to manifest something on a global scale <laughs> but it has <laughs> happened to me in, in, in music too mm -hmm. and it's almost like where's the border you know like I don't know if you believe in the secret and all these uh, like um, sort of manifests about like, okay, when you think, you know, like even the Jim Carrey legend about his check mm. he had envisioned and, and, and written to himself and then he got it. And so there's a lot about that as writers and creators. I mean, the word creator means creator, mm, right? Mm. And so like even when we were writing songs with my mom, some of the things happened later on after, like it's, it's very scary sometimes to be, to be a writer because yeah, is it premonition, intuition or is it manifestation? Um, I absolutely do believe in manifestation. It's it's something I do constantly all day long. Um, and a lot of that comes from a life coach and um, a guy called Dr. Yeah. Joe Dispenza. If you haven't... Oh, wow. You, yeah, I'm reading his oh, books. Oh, which one? Uh, I started Supernatural. Right. And I've watched his videos and uh, there's another book I, I got also because I love so the one, uh, yeah. how he talks about things. But he, I'm going to close on this, but he's fucking incredible. But the one that I think you really, really like, especially if you've got this, this thing happening where you, you go through a cycle of doubt and what have you, is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself is the name of the book. And it's oh, fucking wow. the best. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. I'm going to I'm going to leave it on that and we'll we'll have a uh, That's yeah. great. I, I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Oh, I I really enjoyed the conversation together. That was really cool. That was a great way to also um, get connected even more than uh, through perfect chaos. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. And to cap off your your night and um Listen, man, we'll we'll do this again, and I'm I'm I really like to see your film when it comes out. Absolutely, I will. I will send it and try to get as many views <laughs> as we can. Apply that <laughs> apply that technique for choosing your scenes. Yes. Let me know how it goes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will definitely. I love your work, man. Thank you. See you. <laughs>